Hi, I'm Genetically Modified Skeptic, and you're watching Atheist Edge. Hey, folks. Um, earlier this year, I was doing a little research for uh, it was a video on homeopathy, I think, and I stumbled across a curious video that I'll show you right now. I want to tell you about the universe. But first, I want to tell you about crystals. This 3D glass is called crystal because its atoms are actually arranged in a crystalline pattern. This is about emergence theory. I had no idea what it was. I'll leave some links in the description so you can go and check it out. And if you're not familiar with it, which I wasn't at all. Um, this video had great production quality. Um, honestly, I was a little naive. I, I thought, okay, this might be something legitimate, like actual legitimate physics, science. Um, I thought the scientific claims were fairly credible. Um, and then as I began digging a little deeper, uh, my spidey senses started kicking in. But there's a deep connection between the 2D object on the sand and the 3D mother crystal. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. So then, of course, I said, all right, side note. And when I'm done with the homeopathy segment, now I got to start researching the shit out of this emergence theory or better known as uh, quantum gravity theory. A group of physicists in Los Angeles is working on a new physics theory where a particular 8D crystal, yep, that's right, an eight-dimensional crystal, is projected to 4D at a very particular angle, which forms a 4D quasi-crystal. And from this 4D quasi-crystal, they derive a 3D quasi-crystal, which they believe is the fundamental substructure of all of reality they tried they use deepities which if you don't know what deepity is the definitions on your screen right now deepak chopra david wolf uh you know lots of others use deepities to try to sound credible um anyway i started digging the more i dug the more dubious all these claims became a pixel is the smallest possible indivisible unit of the 2d screen so think of reality as your TV screen, but in 3D. And think of the tetrahedron as a 3D pixel, the smallest possible indivisible unit of reality. Before we get started, I've got an up-and-coming new YouTuber by the name of Jen with one N, who's joined me to help walk you all through this emergence theory. But I'm going to go ahead and let her introduce herself. Oh, hey guys, I'm uh, Jen with one N, and I have a tiny little YouTube channel that explains things, debunks things, and makes people think. Let's start by asking, what is emergence theory? The simple answer is, when an entity is observed to have properties its parts do not have on their own. For example, thoughts arise when you combine a brain, oxygen, circulation, and a food source. Combine a baseball with Nolan Ryan and you get seven career no-hitters. Combine a prefrontal cortex with the fear of death and you get religion. <laughs> well, maybe that's a little too on the mark. A computer is just a computer, but combine many of them with a worldwide network of servers and you get the internet. Emergence theory can also describe the swarming patterns of birds. And lastly, a Mobius strip only has one side, unless you cut it. And now, I'm going to turn myself into my cartoon avatar, just for fun. That's better. How do you like the shirt? Okay, simple enough. But where does this start to go off the rails? Meet Clee Irwin. Clee is a self-described, award-winning physicist, author, and entrepreneur who founded the Quantum Gravity Research Institute in 2009. Pretty impressive, until you start peeling back the layers of this onion. We're going to take them one at a time. Physicist? <laughs> More like college dropout. But I'll let Klee explain in his own words. Quote, I grew up pretty poor, and I dropped out of college to begin earning money to support myself. Academia was too slow for my ADHD mind. Anyway, I had problems, and you don't do that by co copying what others are doing. I wanted to hack the greatest problem in science, the unification of general relativity and quantum mechanics. From an early age, I did my best to do and use my free time studying these subjects. If I'd completed college, it would have been through a more organized study of physics and math. 
But at that point, my focus shifted to me wanting to do something to help the world at a high impact level. Because the future was starting to look scary. We formed Singularity University and Quantum Gravity Research. Many high level people agree something novel is needed. A radically different approach. So here we are, unconstrained by academia and able to work on a radically different approach. Unquote. Author? Well, his articles and quote unquote research papers consist of topics such as cold fusion, the golden ratio, two dimensional crystals, eight dimensional crystals, the meaning of consciousness. This talk is called The Quasi Crystalline Nature of Consciousness in the Universe. If we are successful, this model will be the only microscopic first principles theory of everything. So it will provide an explanation for the fundamental constants, such as the speed of light. So when one realizes that energy is pure information, it becomes clear that reality itself deeply ties into consciousness in some way. As though the fundamental stuff of reality is somehow consciousness. And lastly, entrepreneur? According to Klee, he is the founder and the owner of Irwin Naturals, an award-winning global natural supplement company providing alternative health and healing products sold in thousands of retailers ranging from Walmart to Whole Foods. Irwin Naturals is a longtime supporter of Vitamin Angels, which aims to provide life-saving vitamins to mothers and children at risk of malnutrition, thereby reducing preventable illness, blindness, and death and creating healthier communities. In actuality, the Food and Drug Administration has sent Klee numerous letters warning him about serious safety concerns and multiple violations of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The FDA also reviewed the Maximum Strength Phase Two carb blocker and concluded that the outrageous claims were not supported by reliable and competent scientific evidence. The SEC revoked his registration of Omni Nutraceuticals Incorporated based on repeated failure to file required periodic reports. In 2009, a man from Tennessee said he was nearly killed by Klee's Dual Action Cleanse product. The product eventually generated 816 complaints nationwide at the Better Business Bureau. In 2011, lawsuits were filed and Irwin Naturals was ordered to pay close to $3 million for unfair business practices false and misleading advertising, charging for products that were never ordered, and failing to reimburse customers. Several of their products contained an illegal amount of lead. In one case, the green tea fat burner was over 14 times the legal limit, and the products were not marked with warning labels that are required by law. But, as Klee Irwin himself explains, quote, our products contain less lead than a California-grown avocado. We've investigated these claims and have found the lead to be naturally occurring. Ultimately, for business reasons, we've decided to label our products accordingly. They are nevertheless completely safe, unquote. I still don't like avocados. And this guy has his public image on lock. Now we got this shit on lock. Negative criticism of this Klee Irwin guy is on the internet is so rare, I'm thinking that even the Church of Scientology could learn a few things from him. I don't know how he keeps negative criticism off of the internet so well. It's amazing. You're not going to find a Wikipedia page on him. Why? Well, here's the original entry. And here is the Wikipedia page just one, two, three, four, five days later. There was such an attempt to cover up any negative criticism of Klee Irwin's fraudulent activities, his entry was pulled from Wikipedia altogether. In fact, this particular case is widely used today as an example of abuse and misinformation attempts on the Wikipedia platform. Now, don't get me wrong about Klee Irwin. I'm not dismissing his claims right offhand. If you want your research to get taken seriously, though, you got to go through the proper channels. You have to publish in reputable, peer-reviewed publications. Your claims have to be testable, repeatable, falsifiable. They got to have predictive qualities. All right, and with that, I'm going back to my human form. You have to be able to back up your claims. Like, 
We don't know the exact value of the speed of light. Because quasi-crystals in lower dimensions encode the higher dimensional information. All we measure is three spatial dimensions. Consciousness is a fundamental force. Why even bother with describing? So let's say that 3D reality is this quasi-crystal structure. Why do we have to even say that it's related, that it's uh, mathematically projected from, from an eight-dimensional crystal? Like, why define the quasi-crystal by its eight-dimensional? Okay. okay. So the fact is that one can mathematically express the unification physics with the lower dimensional quasi-crystal. And there is energy potential in eight-dimensional crystals. Or so use 3D and not and, and 4D or 8D without saying lower or higher because it's confusing, I think. Okay. Well, I, I didn't get, yeah, okay, but you're going to have to eventually cut in, if this was a line of thought, you'd have to have cut in how we get from 4D to 3D. I Because I, I, I'll, I'll, oh, you're going to, of course, I'll of course. All right. So. Our conclusion, anyone with an undergrad level of understanding of physics in general, or more specifically quantum physics, can plainly see that this emergence theory phenomenon is nothing more than new age word salad dressed up as legitimate science. So Jen with one in, do you have any plugs for us? Thanks for having such a tiny little YouTuber like me on your channel to help. Um, I'm just going through my alphabet series on my channel A to Z and each letter is a new topic. And I do tiny little fun videos called Specs of Discovery that cover funny things and informational things that a lot of people don't know about. Other than that, um, I'm on Twitter at I wear Crocs a lot, just how it sounds. And yes, I do wear Crocs a lot. No judgment, please. And uh, that's about it. Thanks, guys. And Jen, thank you so much for joining us in this episode. And we hope to have you back. By the time you're watching this, the Faithless Forum in Dallas on 27 April will have already happened. So hopefully we got some great footage there. We've got 11 scripts written, ready to go. So we're looking forward to going there and trying to get some good footage for y'all. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps a lot with the algorithm. Hit subscribe, hit that bell, get notifications for upcoming episodes. Um, we got some really good plans for the future we just hit two years old um thanks to everyone so far that has really made this happen made this fun um thanks to tj courtney and chris my co-hosts uh thanks to my patrons and we'll see you next time